All right, so I, I guess we will try this again. Third time's a charm, right? I, I, it better be, because that's how the phrase works, and I, I would like the phrase to work this time, Dave Cawley, as he joins us in studio. So right. we've, we've been attempting to make contact with former Utah Attorney General Mark Shurtleff, who obviously had a big role in this criminal case against the other former Utah Attorney General, John Swallow. Mark, are you with us? I am. Hi. Great. Uh, glad to hear you're uh, on our air after a couple of rough tries there to get the phone to connect. Uh, first question just has to be, what is going through your mind with the word that uh, the jury came back with not guilty verdicts against uh, your colleague John Swallow here? Well, it's uh, actually a huge celebration and uh, satisfaction for me. It's, it's, it, to me, it's vindication, even though with John Swallow's trial, as you all know and have reported, uh, a lot of this trial had to do with me and allegations about criminal misconduct on my behalf. So for a jury to hear those, that testimony and that argument and then uh, rule that they didn't believe it is, is great. It's huge. You mentioned accurately that this was not your case. There was at one point a case that had been filed against you on similar grounds. That actually never came to trial. In your mind, does what happened today in the court, uh, I guess, uh, basically bring an end to the threat that that uh, those charges would ever come back against you yeah well to, well i know that they was uh, dismissed with what they call without prejudice to come back but the statute of limitations is run and they couldn't bring it back against me but you know you still have that well, what was more important to me was that a lot of people after the prosecutor in my case dismissed the charges was people were like well that's you know maybe that was politics or maybe that was you know some technicality so to actually have a jury appears listen to uh, evidence uh, under all make allegations of criminal misconduct that I, I did and to have them disregard, disbelieve and throw that out and rule there was no criminal misconduct is, is, is big. I mean, it, it really is big. And, and uh, so I'm very pleased because I didn't even have a chance to respond to those charges. They didn't get to hear from me uh, and yet they still uh, ruled as they did. And, and that's, that's great. I've been following your tweets. Obviously, you've been watching this case. It has great personal interest for you. And you mentioned the fact that uh, it, although your name was repeatedly brought up in, in the case here, it wasn't something where you were able to stand up and tell this jury your side of the story. And so in some, I guess, sense, you were providing some perspective uh, through that public forum. For people who have been following this case, this investigation, uh, even for people who knew you when you were attorney general, who now look back and say, what, what do I think about Mark Shirtliff's time in office? What do I think about uh, John Swallow's time in office, brief as it was? What would you tell them? You know, that's a great question. And, and the, the wonderful answer to that is uh, during the last four years when there was almost almost daily, frankly, negative stories about me and uh, frankly a lot of uh, close friends mostly uh, people who were in politics and legislators and others I worked with who disappeared I got to tell you what kept me going was the fact that common citizens almost every day I'm not exaggerating uh, on the street at the store at, the, at, a, at an RSL game you name it people would just come up to me who I didn't know and say look we don't believe this we thank you for your service that kept me going. And now, believing that, now they can all sit back and say, you know, we were right about how we judged Mark Shirtless. Have you had a chance to talk to John about uh, how, how this was for him? Have you two connected? We have not. I mean, I texted him immediately uh, several times now, and he's, he's with his family as, as appropriate friends celebrating uh, the relief. But I expect to talk to him soon and to graduate him in person. And because I don't know how many people can actually relate to what he and his family, sorry, have gone through, um, but I can, and I and I'm just so pleased for him. Um, uh, regardless of how I feel about all the all the allegations and and how you know our fi our fire association what it turned into through all of this, uh, but I'm sure I'll have a chance to talk to him, and I've encouraged him to get on KSL and other places and, and talk about this and answer people's questions. 
We're speaking with former Utah Attorney General Mark Shurtleff regarding the breaking news this afternoon that a jury came back with not guilty verdicts in that public corruption trial against another former Utah Attorney General, the man who followed Shurtleff in that office, John Swallow. Mark, I hear the emotion in your voice as as you talk about what this has been. Uh, I personally, in covering the case, remember watching the raid at your home and at uh, Mr. Swallow's home where agents went in. Uh, I know in your case there was there was great personal feeling on your part about uh, what that did with your, your family in the house to have that uh, handling. Uh, is that still very close to the surface for you? Oh, absolutely. You know, my, I talked to my, my daughter who at the time was 16 years old and had the horrible experience with me in D.C. and you know, law enforcement, the FBI, the Department of Public Safety, the prosecutors, Sim Gill, all knew I was gone, and yet they went into my home, uh, contrary to everything I've ever taught, and I have taught use of force, and, and I have taught search and seizure in, in police academies, and they went in there, pointed guns at my daughter, and threatened and screamed at her and my son, and to receive a call, I mean, put yourself as any father, and you get a call from across the country of a daughter in absolute trauma, say, Daddy, what just happened? And you know, I've spent, I spent my whole career supporting law enforcement. And if, and if I didn't expect any special treatment ever, but if they would do that to me for whatever purpose to hurt my family like that, it's just, it's got to stop. It's got, it can't, it'll happen to anybody. Uh, and it's just wrong. Uh, and so, yeah, there's uh, there needs to be more done so to see that this doesn't happen again, and, and I'm certainly going to do what I can to make sure that doesn't happen to anybody else. In your personal situation, Mark, I know that uh, you obviously segued from being a public service to now uh, being in the private sector, and uh-huh. and at one point in your career, before a lot of this was. Uh, you know, uh, before this came up and became such an impediment, you had eyeballed uh, a run for, and actually, I guess we're pursuing a run for the U.S. Senate in uh, Mr. Swallow's case. You know, here's a person who was in office for just a brief amount of time, months, and uh, had to, under pressure, leave that office in the face of this investigation. Is there, in your mind, a a penalty or a cost that, that has come to either of your careers based on what has ultimately ended up being something where no criminal charges uh, could be proven in a court of law? Well, I think that's a great question, and, and it's been said before. I didn't originate this, um, but it's been said, you know, where do I where do I go? Where does John Swallow go now to get his reputation back? I mean, it's, you can't take back what's out there on the Internet for three and a half years, a false narrative, truly a false narrative about what, was said to have occurred, and it, so it, it is damaging, and it, and it may never be able to uh, recoup the financial harm, uh, the reputational harm it does. Uh, but, you know, I, I also hope that, because I love, you know, our system of government where we have people who don't serve. It's a nasty business. I love my service, but it's hard. It's hard on families even without what has happened. I hope good people will still who want to contribute. Sorry. We're not just dis- waiting. Who will still go forward and want to be a part and put their, their names and their family and their lives and reputation on the line to serve. And they just still do that. And, and, you know, the only way I think that happens is that we learn from this experience and we hold people accountable who did wrong. Uh, and we move forward, and, and you know, in, in that sense, I'm I'm very happy with the system of justice. I think, you know, I believe in justice, the true principle, and it was served ultimately today. We're speaking with former Utah Attorney General Mark Shirtliff, getting his reaction, his thoughts, and as you can hear, his emotion to the word, the breaking news this afternoon that a jury in Salt Lake City returned not guilty verdicts on all counts in the criminal case against former Utah Attorney General John Swallow, the man who followed Shirtliff in that office. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us tonight with sharing your perspective on this, and we will certainly be following up with you in the days and weeks to come uh, to hear about where we go from here, as I think you pointed out. Well, 
thank you. I mean, I appreciate the forum because there's no way that anybody learns or moves forward without the public knowing. And, and we rely on the media, the free press, to be able to spread that message. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good night to you. Good night. Former Attorney General Mark Shetliff uh, joining us on KSL News Radio. Dave Cauley in studio. And I have to tell you, that's, you know, in all of this, Dave, you can't deny the fact that, you know, you've got families involved, you've got people involved, there's lives involved, there's futures involved, there's a lot of emotion. People's whole careers. I mean, the one thing you can say, regardless of your personal feelings or thoughts on this in, this case, this investigation. Uh, you know, I, for one, spent a lot of time reviewing uh, the separate House, state House investigation into John Swallow, and it's, it's hard to read a lot of the investigative documents, which are, of course, not vetted in court, but these are the opinions of the people who were doing the investigation, and, and, and not maybe feel like there's something there. But at the same time, when you step back and say, in our government, you have a uh, a rule of law system where people take those complaints to a judge, to a court, and ultimately before a jury, and we lay that evidence out, let the jury decide, as we had today, well, the jury comes back not guilty, this person is acquitted, you have to step back and say, okay, so where do we stand? Ultimately, you have somebody who was accused of a crime, who proved their uh, innocence, or at least proved that they could not be found guilty uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, in a court of law, that person is is stuck with the personal cost of having lost, in a lot of ways, career reputation. Uh, somebody who was in a uh, job as a public servant now having to say, uh, "Can I ever get that back? You know, can you get that train and back isn't, on the track?" And, and isn't that such an important point when we talk about everything that we're going to talk about tonight? Whether it's Donald Trump, Jeff Sessions, whether it's right here when we're talking about. Uh, the news today of former Utah Attorney General John Swallow found not guilty on all public corruption charges. You talk about uh, even the former Attorney General Mark Shurtleff, their lives. You know, it's it's hard in this, well, in any day and age, but certainly now, when we hear all of these stories about the fact that there are people that want to desperately get off the sidelines and in the game. And when things like this take place, when there are issues like we hear nationally, it's tough. It's tough for people to make that decision. It is tough. And it has an impact not just on the lives of the people who are performing these jobs, but when you think about people who hold these jobs in government, they make decisions that affect a great many people. Sure. And so if you take somebody out of that office, uh, you know, the, the claim from uh, Swallow's camp has long been that these charges were politically motivated, yeah. that his political opponents brought them forward as a method to basically impugn his integrity and get him out of office. Well, that that can change the course of investigations, if you're talking about people who are, you know, executives like uh, governors, mayors, whatever, they make decisions that affect their citizens. Sure. And I think we all bear the responsibility of looking at the evidence, certainly, but also looking at the decision of a jury and saying the jury decided in this case that there was not enough evidence for a conviction. What, uh, what then do we need to think about our own thoughts and perceptions of the people who are charged? The news that came out a little earlier, former Utah Attorney General John Swallow found not guilty on all public corruption charges. We'll continue to follow this story tonight as we get more uh, audio possibly from jurors tonight. We'll have that uh, audio for you as well, and we'll keep you up to date on this story. And Dave Cauley joining us in the studio for a few minutes on KSL News Radio. All right, my friend, good to see you. Thank you. You as well, Drew. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, boy, as if there's not a lot to talk about tonight. Where do we begin? Where do we start? Well, maybe we'll start coming up next break with a little bit of news out of D.C. and your thoughts on Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump and the Russian connection. And is this ridiculous? Has this gone too far? Is there something to it? We'll get to all of that coming up.